What is going on, guys? Grave here today. I'd like to talk about ESO and is it worth playing uh, the Elder Scrolls Online in 2021? To kind of give you guys some uh, perspective of when the game came out, if you have not been playing the game yet or if you've just started, the game was released on PC in 2014 and on console in 2015. I started playing the game on console in 2015 around three to four or five months, uh, I would say, after it was released. So I got in in the game kind of early, but not, you know, on release day. So I've been playing the game for a really long time now. I don't play it all the time, every day, every single hour. It's I play a lot of stuff. If, you, if you've been around my channel here for a while, you know that I have a lot of different games that I upload. But Elder Scrolls Online is a game that I always play year in and year out. Uh, one great thing about it is if you are new to the game, there are tons of areas, tons of DLC, uh, plus tons of things to do just in the base game. So you can purchase the base game for really cheap. I've seen people talking about this game used uh, at you know Walmart, GameStop, Best Buy for like a dollar or two. Or you can find it on the PlayStation Store, the Xbox Store. Uh, even the sales they do with their own you know um, server that you play on, or or their own website you know that you play through through Bethesda and Zenimax on PC. This game is on sale a lot. Uh, the great thing about it is you can buy the base game. You can have tons to do, and if you want to buy DLC after that, you can do that. Also, the game offers a lot of different sales on the game plus majority of the DLC that comes out every year for very, very cheap. So you can always, uh, you know, upgrade. You can always, you know, just buy the DLC individual or, or kind of individually. Uh, but the great thing is, like I said, if you're just starting out, there's enough to do in the base game to keep you occupied for a long time and really let you find out if you really enjoy the game. Um, another thing that is really fun about the game, in my opinion, or really good about the game is you can play solo or with friends. And it doesn't really uh, matter how you want to play. You know, if you want to go play with your friends and do the story missions, that is fine. If you want to play by yourself, that is fine. The game's quest and things like that are very story driven. So you're going to get to discover a lot of different worlds and things like that. And it does feel, in my opinion, like a bit much now that the game has gotten so big. The game has grown so much compared to just the base game. There's a lot to do and it can be kind of overwhelming. But I think once most people get into it, kind of figure out exactly, you know, or not exactly figure out everything, but figure out how things are working, kind of how the story is, you know, driven, that kind of thing. I, I really feel that, that it becomes a lot less overwhelming. Now, there's still a lot to learn, of course, the further you get into it, you know, the more you want to play. But at the same time, uh, it, it's, it's a game that I think can tailor to new players and veteran players alike. And that is one thing I really enjoy about the game. I have played it, like I said, since it, you know, a few months after it released in 2015. And like I said, it's not a game that I play day in and day out because, you know, I do upload a lot of different things here on the channel, but I can come back to this game anytime during the year and pick right up where I left off and still have a absolute blast playing it. Um, the thing that is really great after you kind of get past the story part, um, you'll start to unlock dungeons. You know, the more you level up, the higher level you get going from one to 50. Uh, once you get, you know, kind of some levels under your belt, you'll have the option to unlock dungeons, which are four player content, which are really fun to play. There's also options to play solo dungeons in the game later on and trials, which are big group dungeons. So there's a lot of different ways that you can play the game, whether it be just out adventuring, playing solo, uh, playing with friends, doing story. And of course you can always do things like that as long as you want. You can go out and do story missions. You can go out and, uh, you know, just find loot to sell, find gear to rank up, find gear to level up, that, that kind of thing. Or you can go in and do some of this harder content with players. Uh, when you come a little bit more, you know, a little bit more uh, in depth, I guess, or a little bit more knowledgeable about the game, a little bit stronger, that kind of thing. Once you hit 50, you will go into that champion point system, which is kind of confusing to begin with. Uh, it is about to get changed here in uh, a few months with the new update. The champion point system has been around for a really long time. Uh, they've had several different uh, leveling systems here in the game. The champion point one has been around for a, a good period of time now. They're going to tweak some things with it. But it's just a, a way to kind of advance your play once you hit that, you know, level 50 area. Or once you hit level 50, you have other options, uh, you know, to kind of continue to advance through the game. Uh, one thing that I really like uh, when it comes to looting, if you're just a person who likes to go out and loot, find loot, find gear, that kind of thing, there's always ways to do that. Whether you want to go out and farm it yourself or you can actually purchase it from guild traders with gold you make in game. Uh, one good thing also about this is there's always new gear coming in and into the game. Now, whether it will be the best wear, who knows, uh, whether it will be the best gear to have. No one really knows that until all of this stuff is released year in and year out. But the good thing is there's always four 
uh, DLCs each year, like I kind of talked about to begin with, a dungeon DLC, a new zone DLC, a second dungeon DLC, and kind of a small story arc DLC. So every year you have new dungeons to kind of explore, new areas to explore, and that's what makes the game very enjoyable in my opinion. Now, if you're not a fan of just PvE content, kind of running around doing solo stuff or group stuff, there is options to play PvP as well. Now, you can go in and play PvP. While it is annoying for a lot of people that have played it for a long time, they have a lot of issues with it, it can be very enjoyable. But once again, kind of like the PvE aspect, it is a not a massive learning curve, but it will take you a while to get used to it if it's the first time really playing the Elder Scrolls Online. But you can find a lot of knowledgeable information a lot of knowledgeable people uh, online with different builds for PVE or PVP that can kind of help you out with those things. But there is a little bit some, something for everyone. Kind of like I said, if you want to play solo, if you want to play with friends, if you want to play uh, PVP solo or with friends, there's a lot of options here. Um, the, another thing a lot of people ask is, you know, what kind of character customization do we have? You can make either a tank, healer, or a DPS. Tons of different races to choose from. And the great thing about this is, is there's tons of different ways to build your character depending on what style character you have. And with the upcoming uh, changes to CP, this is going to get even better. Uh, there's going to be even more options to build different style classes between those three that we talked about, between the tank, healer, and the DPS. So there's a lot of different options for character creation, a lot of different options for what race the character is, a lot of different options for how your character is going to look. You can change your your gear, different outfits, unlock things, find things, buy things, whatever you, whatever you kind of want to do. Um, there's also options to craft. You can go in and be a crafter, crafting, crafting gear, crafting bows, swords, uh, shields, uh, all kinds of weapons, uh, crafting armor, uh, crafting jewelry to wear. I mean, it, it is a pretty much endless game, in my opinion, if you decide to craft, because you can craft things forever. You can even craft furniture for your home. So there's just a lot of different things you can do within the game. Uh, when it comes to uh, you know player base, a lot of people always ask that. Do people still play this game as long as it's been out? Bethesda and uh, Zenimax have said that this game had its most, uh, most growth ever in 2020. So you can kind of get an idea of where the game is, no matter what platform you play on. Now, I'm sure some of the things going on in the world had to, something to do with people coming into the game and playing. A lot of people were at home, working from home, or not working, you know, uh, just kind of waiting around. Uh, you know, people being on lockdown, that kind of thing going on. Uh, but there's been a lot of people coming into the game. There's a lot of been, there's been a lot of people staying in the game, and that is kind of how it's always been to me. You will always see new players year in and year out. Does everybody stay? No. Is it everybody's thing? Not necessarily. But the majority of the people that I, I know that play really enjoy it. Whether they stay the entire time and continue to play as long as I have, or as long as a lot of other players have, or whether they just kind of you know play it for you know a several months to a year. Most everyone that plays the game really has a great time. And that is what kind of uh, the Elder Scrolls Online is all about. So just overall, guys, if you're looking for a fun MMORPG style game to play, this is definitely worth a look, in my opinion, this year. It's been worth a look every year that I've done these videos. Uh, it, there's always something to do. Uh, like I said, whether you buy the base game or you get into the game and you love it and you want to purchase all the DLC. I mean, there's always something to do. It's always a very enjoyable experience. And, of course, you will meet some really... Uh, fun people to hang out with online within just the open world and in guilds. Now, I'm not going to say that you're not going to meet some people that aren't just the most friendly. That's kind of how it is in every game, you know, open world where you actually can talk with people in a chat and things like that. But for the most part, you will find some really cool people that can help you out and, uh, you know, kind of help you along the way if you have any questions. Of course, guys, leave me a comment with your thoughts. And if you liked it, hit the like. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. And I'll catch you all next time. Peace.